Welcome to 6.5 on the Road's continuing coverage of Supercomputing 2024. I'm Dave Nicholson, and I'm here with Chad Dunn from Dell Technologies to talk about the world of generative AI, specifically from the perspective of the Dell AI factory. Chad, welcome to the program. How are you? Hey, Dave. I'm doing great. It's great to be here with you. So what the heck is, what the heck is an AI factory? And, uh, and, and, and let, then that first, first define AI factory, and then let's get into this discussion about what people are doing in the, in the generative AI space. Sure. Uh, well, look, the AI factory is a set of configurations that we've cultivated that really accelerate the time to value for an enterprise that wants to adopt generative AI. So we go through all the hard work of qualifying the different hardware components, networking, storage, servers, GPUs, including the software stacks. So when you decide to embark on your, your generative AI journey, you've got a blueprint that's going to guide you to success when you go to deployment. So you just called out specifically generative AI. I was, uh, that, that's, that's good because for years, Dell has been helping people with artificial intelligence. Yep. It's just that generative has sort of taken all of the, you know, take, taken all of the uh, conversational bandwidth uh, in, in the last year. But for all sorts of expert systems and machine learning, you guys have been doing this for years. What are the particular challenges or, or, or hurdles that you're seeing folks need to overcome with generative AI specifically? Oh man, there are a whole bunch. Uh, if, if you were to sort of compare this to the AI that you just talked about, what we would call sort of classic AI, if you looked at the ecosystem of, of software partners that were out there, these were largely end-to-end -end use cases. That's not the case with generative AI. We've got lots and lots of ecosystem partners that are out there adding value in all sorts of different ways. And the way that you assemble these components together to get to an outcome uh, is, is incredibly varied and it allows for a lot of differentiation. But what we're seeing in terms of challenges are enterprises who have sort of mandated that we need to find value out of AI, whether that's specifying a use case or, or an outcome, a business outcome that they want to achieve. And a lot of that is happening in the lines of business within our biggest customers. But then what we find is happening is as they get those, those pilots or those POCs to the point where they need to go to production, IT struggles to get them into production with a reasonable ROI. And so that's where we try to come to the rescue with doing things like these, these pre-built blueprints that allow them to easily manage the infrastructure that's going to run these AI workloads. Because you've got to satisfy that IT crowd, but you've also got to satisfy the AI practitioners and the data scientists that are going to be innovating inside of your company. So how do you deal with the dynamic where a customer says, hey, look, Chad, um, I don't want to be doing this with someone who has never put something like this together before when the reality is, yeah, let's say 80% of it is stuff that you absolutely have experience with. But, but to a degree, we're all in this journey together, kind of building an airplane in flight. How do you reassure folks that no matter what happens, you've got their back? Hey, the, the good news and the bad news is, None of us have done this before. This is really cutting edge technology. Uh, now, the interesting thing that we've encountered here at Dell is we uh, we went all in on the infrastructure for generative AI from the beginning. So we were one of the first ones out there with the, with the kinds of hardware that we have that can partner with people like NVIDIA and AMD and Intel to support the accelerators that they built. But internally, we also had that that same push to to get return out of generative AI inside the four walls of Dell. and so. We planted a garden of a thousand flowers to see what would bloom in terms of pilots. And lots of them bloomed and lots of them didn't. And lots of them couldn't be transplanted. And so we learned a lot of the hard lessons about what it means to be able to take something from a good idea to a pilot to something that we can put into production. And it's sort of like crossing the chasm, right? Getting from pilot to production is always a big challenge. And that challenge could be in terms of data governance. A challenge could be in terms of IT supportability, observability, it could be in terms of sustainability. So honestly, we took a few lumps as we did that, and we started to get pretty good at the way that we approach these POCs. And you know, we did things like saying an AI POC should take 90 days. If we can't do it in 90 days, it's probably not something we should focus on right now, right? We went through a lot of, of um, 
of, of challenges and then developing a methodology for what we would do with AI. Because you can do lots and lots of things, but if they don't add to your core competency, if they don't enhance your core competency or make you more differentiated, you probably shouldn't do them. If you're a software company, you probably shouldn't bring in your own AI to do your HR system. You're going to get that functionality for free. You should focus on building better code. And so we learned a lot of those lessons early on, and, and we're really eager to share those with our customers. Okay, so a bit of Dell drinking its own champagne, which is a good thing. Then again, I hear a bit of, uh, of uh, experiments on, uh, on Dell employees. The, you know, the moral ambiguity there, we'll just leave that aside, uh, all, all that experimentation. But seriously, if someone is looking for a partner to move forward with these things, if they tell you today, oh, yeah, we've got 100% of it figured out, they're lying. So it's refreshing to hear you say, yeah, there's stuff we're going to be figuring out along the way uh, in, 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 in a positive way, because uh, that kind of agility makes a lot of sense. I, I, am I mischaracterizing it? I don't want to paint you in a corner. There are probably just things that they haven't learned yet. For, yes, there you go. Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> I know Chad is like, no, Dave, no, we know. We, we, we've, we haven't figured out. Yes. Uh, so what about um, uh, from the AI factory perspective, this is a fast moving thing also. Uh, you know, coming out of the supercomputing conference and, and as we move forward into 2025, what's new and what can you share with us about what's under development from an AI factory perspective? Well, sure. Uh, lots of stuff. So, you know, starting with the, the hardware roadmap, I mean, what we're seeing in generative AI is the, the, the silicon roadmap and the systems roadmap is moving so fast that you're seeing innovation on on a pace that's much faster than, than Moore's Law ever predicted. So uh, if you look at the AI factory that we have today, we have new servers like the XE7740, the IR7000, we have new GPUs for NVIDIA, the H200 NVL, the GB200. You know, these are a lot of great letters and numbers. What they really mean is more horsepower, more iron, um, sometimes more power, uh, sometimes, sometimes, more more power. sometimes more power. <laughs> sometimes more um, power. Sometimes yeah, more. Yeah. Sometimes more cooling. Now you're now you're now yeah. you're hedging a little bit. We're 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 now fully into into uh, liquid cooling is on the horizon and something we believe is going to come into the enterprise in the not too distant future. Um, silicon diversity, as I mentioned, we're working with Nvidia. We're working with AMD. We're working with Intel. We're working with. I couldn't tell you how many software partners we're working with in the in the ecosystem that accomplish different tasks in the AI workflow, whether it's people like Hugging Face, where we have our, our enterprise hub for uh, for downloading models, like Llama, Llama 3.2, uh, like Mistral, like other partners that, that we're cultivating, um, but also you know vendors who are, are doing innovative things with, with AI. So as I mentioned, Unlike sort of the classic AI use cases, there's so many different ecosystem partners. The way that you assemble these, these ecosystem components lead to differentiation. So I think there's a lot of room for our customers to really differentiate, really innovate around the solutions that they build. And, and we're there to help them not only with the infrastructure and the software, but also with the services, with the consulting to select the right use cases, to put it together the right way, and to get them up to speed on how to operate that infrastructure once they've got it stood up. Yeah, so 20 years ago, uh, services from Dell would be uh, plugging in an electrical cable, plugging in an ethernet cable, uh, maybe wiring some storage up to a server. Here you go. Uh, I'm dramatically simplifying it, but seriously, think about it. All you need is a SKU for, if, if all I want, I, I want 500 terabytes of block-based storage. Yeah. Okay, click these three boxes and we'll get the crate out to you right away. It's a little bit different when someone says, I want to put together an AI strategy. Yeah. Uh, those services are much more complex. Is that pretty much where the conversation starts? I mean, you, you, yeah. you must have teams where there is a services person on board from the get-go, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we're, we're not we're not crimping so many RJ45 connectors anymore, but what we are doing is getting engaged really early on with the customer and identifying what are the use cases? Because what we find is at first, if, if, if you sort of drew the customer journey, you would say, I have data, I'm going to apply generative AI, and I'm going to get to a great business outcome. 
It's going to be amazing. And everybody in the C-suite goes, yes, go do it. Please report back your, your results. Um, and there was a lot of sort of messiness in the middle of infrastructure, of software, of services to put that all together. And so we've come in to really help pull that all together and make that a, a cohesive journey. But now what we're finding, and that's sort of a last year thing. If I look at what's happening now and what's happening next year, we see customers who already have an idea of what that use case might be. It might be um, retrieval augmented generative AI. So RAG for enterprise search or for customer support. It might be inferencing, but they have an idea of what it is and they have an idea of what that outcome needs to be. Now, the trick is identifying those use cases that are going to be high business value and high feasibility because those are the ones that you want to target, right? That's the low hanging fruit. And interestingly, what's feasible today is going to be different than what's feasible in six months with the rate at which this ecosystem and the technology is progressing. So starting out with a really robust consulting service to understand the results that you want to get and the path to get there uh, is key to every single generative AI opportunity that we work on. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And I'm curious, when you're engaging with customers today, do you feel like they have, at least on the IT side of things, have they gotten down into the weeds like they might have been 10 or 20 years ago when it comes to specifying the bits and the bobs and that, that you know, the, the, the pieces of the puzzle. Um, the reason why I ask that is I would say five years ago, we were in, we were in this age where, where hyperscale cloud providers and even Dell offering uh, hybrid cloud solutions, kind of the mantra was, don't worry about the hardware. Let's talk about the outcomes. Let's talk about the service that you want out of this. We'll figure out on the back end which little uh, Lego bricks need to be assembled. We'll make sure that you get the outcome. You don't need to worry about the brand names of, of the parts. I guess the, you know, the elephant in the room is we have NVIDIA dominating this space, but you guys are the Switzerland when it comes to AI. Um, you know, I know that you're doing work with Intel GPUs, uh, uh, AMD, and a whole host of other accelerator vendors for specific things. Are you, do you have a challenge with customers who are, who are basically telling you what they think they need um, as opposed to trusting your judgment on the back end? What, what does that look like? It it's, it's really funny that you asked that because I happen to be sitting um, at our, our office at, uh, at One Penn Plaza in New York City and some of our most valuable customers and some of our most technically astute customers are within a one mile radius of here. And, and some of them would mine their own silicon if they were given the opportunity. <laughs> but uh, certainly we're, we're seeing, as I mentioned, that chasm between um, getting from pilot to production. And there is a place there where IT does need to be involved because we can we can certainly give you the whole package of the infrastructure, the the operating system, Kubernetes, the ML and LLM ops layer, the applications for inferencing and RAG that sit on top. We can do all of that. But if IT can't support it reliably in just the way that they support the rest of their IT infrastructure, it's a non-starter, right? So if they can't authenticate it, if they can't protect it, if they can't back it up, if they can't monitor it, if they can't audit it, then it's not going to get into production. So they're right, right? They need to understand that, yes, there's some amazing magic that's going to happen here at the generative AI application layer. But unless IT can support that full infrastructure, it's, it's useless to them. Now, the interesting thing is we've been very successful with, thing, with, with customers like tier two cloud service providers who are largely greenfield opportunities. So they need hardware and they need some level of software, but they're gonna add their value add on top of that. But if I go into an existing enterprise, I all of a sudden have to worry about all the things that enterprises are supposed to worry about, security, auditability, observability. So we really do have to cater to, to that sort of a need within these customers. And I think that's part of the challenges as, 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 uh, as we as vendors and not just us, but other vendors, move from service providers into the enterprise space. Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone told you beforehand, Chad, but we're actually recording this. And uh, and so I'd like to take the opportunity to ask you for what your predictions are for the year ahead. We're, we're in the waning weeks of, uh, of 2024. 
what are your predictions for 2025? I, I mentioned that disclaimer that just to remind you that it is being recorded so we can come back and, you know, maybe maybe humiliate or celebrate you a year from now, depending upon what goes on. So give me give me a few like legit predictions. And then and then I want to hear your your sort of craziest one that you that you almost cringe about when you say it. But I want you to say it anyway. Uh, if you've got some wild predictions, like what sure. the craziest thing might be. So what hit us with what what's going to happen in 2025? Well, look, I think for our customers, this is going to be the year of, of ROI for generative AI. Right. So you know, companies are going to have to start to get serious, just as Dell did about um, when they embark on a, a generative AI pilot. There needs to be an ROI there that needs to be proven and they need to be serious about it. So I think that the, the bar is going to be much higher for investment in, in generative AI pilots. Um, I think that from a technology perspective, we're going to see uh, agents and agentic AI start to become mainstream. Um, we're starting to see the beginnings of that right now. But, you know, today, if I look at generative AI, it's sort of a um, question response. And as we sit here a year from now, if we happen to have the, the good fortune to talk again, um, it's going to be provide input in, into a series of agents and let them make decisions about what your intent is about the answer that you want to get. And so I think we're going to see these systems become much, much more advanced. Um, I think we're going to see models um, get smaller and more efficient. We're already starting to see some of that. Um, we see large language models of you know, multi-billions of, of parameters, and that's great. But in some use cases, you want a really small, really efficient model that's really focused on the data that you want to process. And I think that's that's going to be a big trend that we see in the, in the, in the coming year. Um, and you asked me about something that was uh, sort of crazy that I'll cringe at if I if I hear a year from now. <laughs> Take I'm a chance. Really, I'm going to be really <laughs> esoteric because this was like yes. a weird moment for me. Um, if you've ever watched like season three of Westworld, yes. when you know people could largely do anything by you know talking to their phone and saying you know rent an apartment, purchase this, do do these things. I think you're going to start to see things like that, and I think that all of us vendors are are wondering when is AI going to start to negotiate prices between us and our customers and our suppliers <laughs> and, and really. Take all of that away from us and become a, a perfectly efficient economy, and we'll all be perfect capitalists at that point. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 coming so quickly. Um, I have to jump in with one, and that is although I fully expect uh, the McLaren Formula One team, sponsored by Dell Technologies, to uh, take the constructors' championship next year. Uh, I still want uh, Lewis Hamilton to win the driver's championship <laughs> driving for Ferrari. So sorry. So, so you got me half papaya. All right. All right. I, I, I hope so. But, but, but for the record, my son, Evan is a, uh, is a huge Red Bull fan. Is he? Oh, ex so there you go. So you're, 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 you're a house divided already. We are a house divided. In a way. Chad, it's been great to talk to you about AI, generative AI, uh, Dell's AI factory solutions. Uh, we definitely will come back and chat about this next year and and uh, and see where we've got it. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this continuing coverage by 6.5 on the Road of Supercomputing 2024.